People have been tracking these four technologies are familiar with this tide of interest in the direction of transhumanism is the whole area of artificial intelligence or some people would express it the simulation of cognitive behavior but the fact that software can learn has uh, staggering impl implications in, especially in the large-scale sense and of course it, this is a very popular theme in fiction but it's also a very real horizon that we're approaching. Some scientists refer to this as the singularity. I call it transcendence. When you look at what the human brain can do, it's really amazing the way we can reason about things and think very deeply about things. But where we start to run into a wall is when we're faced with leveraging huge volumes of data. In order to push the boundaries of human cognition, we want to provide access to all of that data to facilitate or enable human cognition beyond these barriers. The essence of cognitive computing, to me, is making computers actually more like biological systems, whether or not they're brains. And the computers we've been using for the past 60 years have been amazing machines, but they've all been slaves to a program that's been pre-written, where we're trying to invent an entirely new computer architecture that works more like the way our brains do, and there's no program. We do the things we do because of the way our brains are configured. But having that kind of fluidity where they, they respond and, and react appropriately, so you feel like you're dealing with another living thing, not, not a machine. Some of the aspirations of the transhumanists is a presumption that they can take our consciousness, which is really software, not hardware, and transfer that into another environment. The day that the computer, in its elegance, exceeds the capacity of the human mind is a day when they can take a human consciousness and put it inside a computer and have it reside there. Mind uploading would be an example of transhumanism, where you would put your brain into a computer and you would operate from, I guess, like a more programmer type of stance where anything is possible. Ray Kurzweil likes to call that point of crossover the singularity. The singularity is technology becoming more godlike and becoming more capable than humanity is. When technology can do more than humanity can, we have reached a period of singularity. Well, once they get that far, they've achieved immortality. Singularity for some people is like religion. So the first thing you need to understand, the, I can't really see you. I can see the temporary residence that you're in. If I had my computer here, and you knew everything there was to know about every resistor, every wire, every part in that computer, could you tell me anything about its behavior? And the answer is no because the hardware is simply the environment that the software resides in. To know what its behavior is, you have to understand its software. The real you, call it soul, spirit, give it what labels you like, the real you is software, not hardware. Now software has some peculiar characteristics. I can take software and send it through the air. It has no mass. Einstein made history by recognizing we live in a four-dimensional continuum, not three. The three spatial dimensions we know, length, width, and height, and time. But a physicist today will not speak of space or time separately, he speaks of space-time. Time is a physical property, and that's profoundly important to understand. Software has no mass, which means software has no time dimension. The real you is eternal, whether you're saved or not and that while our body might not go beyond death, our minds might. We're only scratching the surface.